Hey everyone, this is Matthew Jenner for Card Runners, and I'm here with Cutoff vs. Button vs. Blind Play Part 1. This is a new series that's going to be several videos, and in this series I'll be examining how to play both as the cutoff and against the cutoff in many different situations. We'll tackle everything, pre-flop, flop, turn, and river play, but I do plan to put extra emphasis on 3-bet pots. That's because I think 3-bet pots are the name of the game right now, Basically, people just really think you should be 3-betting very aggressively now against cutoff and especially button opens, and also people defend much more aggressively by calling against 3-bets. So it's really important to get comfortable in 3-bet pots, so that's what I want to put a lot of emphasis on for this series. And I will also try to make my best guess and then analyze it more than I used to. So what I mean by this is I usually have a very methodical approach when I'm looking at like a flop texture or a turn texture. I'll often first ask myself, what hands do I want to raise for value? Then see how many value raises I have. And then from there, figure out how many bluff raises I think I should have. So if you've seen my other videos, you'll probably see me say something like, okay, I'm raising six hands for value on the flop. I want to have 10 or 11 bluffs to balance out that range. And I think that's a very useful thing to do. But I also, in this video, want to sort of answer what I would do with specific hands very, very quickly, the way I'd have to actually do if I were actually playing. Because if you're actually playing, you don't have 10 or 15 minutes to sort of write down what you want to do with every single hand in your range. So I'm going to try to emphasize that a little bit more here. I'm going to try to give myself the chance to be wrong. And then when I am analyzing situations, if I'm randomly generating a flop or a turn, I want to give you an initial immediate guess for what I think the best line is and then analyze it later. In other words, I think you learn a lot more from giving yourself the chance to be wrong than you otherwise would. So a good example of this is if you're studying chemistry and you have to read a chapter on kinetics, you can easily be reading through the chapter, you know, you're in school, you're reading through the chapter, you're understanding stuff, you feel like you get it. And then when you actually have to do problems and you do something wrong, that's when you really start learning it. Because if someone's just showing you how stuff works or showing you the right answer, you don't remember it nearly as well as if you actually tried to solve a problem or actually had to answer a question, and then you did it wrong, and someone explains to you why you were wrong. So I think the same thing applies in poker. If you actually allow yourself to be wrong, and then you correct it, you're going to remember it a lot better than if someone's just like presenting you ranges for what they think is correct in a certain spot. So I'll probably be wrong lots of times in this series as I make my first initial guess, and hopefully that will let me and you guys remember my mistakes better. Goals for this video are first to make preflop ranges, second is to get somewhat comfortable with different preflop situations, and third will be to examine how likely we'll be playing in three bet pots relative to single raise pots. So I really want to answer this question because I really want to emphasize three bet pots in this series and I want to see if that looks like it's going to make sense. Preflop. One of my biggest past mistakes has been trying to use theory to create preflop ranges from scratch. This usually works out pretty terribly since you can't really model preflop play. And when I say it works out pretty terribly, I mean if you were to use just theory to make preflop ranges now, you'd make ranges a lot worse than the good players are currently using. Obviously, if you look at ranges now compared to six years ago, they look completely different, but using theory alone to make preflop ranges now does not work out very well. Most notably, the terms value bet and bluff don't work, and those are terms that people are used to using on every street, including preflop, when in reality, the terms work best on the river. Um, they still work pretty well on the turn and on the flop, but they do not work well at all preflop, and even the flop can be really tricky. Okay. What you can do is use theory to check to see if ranges look clearly wrong, as well as sort of see if they look reasonable once you have a better sense of what you're looking for. And that's what we're going to do today. A bit more on preflop play. Luckily, I've done a lot of work on preflop ranges recently and should be able to make some pretty good ranges. I'll start with my best guess and then we'll examine them. Be prepared to 3-bet and call 3-bets a lot. The math seems to justify this, as we'll see in a little bit. And high stakes, heads up, no limit players, both three bet and call three bets a ton. And it is sort of good to understand what high stakes heads up players are doing because they are probably the best players in the world and you can learn a lot from them. Anyways, heads up players both three bet a lot now and they call three bets a ton. Granted, we're not going to analyze heads up play. So while ranges will be stronger for the positions we're talking about, you know, the cutoff basically opens a much tighter range than the button does in heads up. 
the general principles are still going to apply.